On the 14th of January 2016, multiple explosions and gunfire were reported near the Serena shopping mall in central Jakarta, Indonesia. At the intersection of Jalan Kyai Haji Wahid Hasyam and Jalan MH Thamrin, one blast went off in a Starbucks cafe and one went off at a police post outside the mall. The attack occurred near a United Nations UN information center, as well as luxury hotels and foreign embassies, including France's the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP confirmed that a Dutch UN official was seriously injured in the attacks. It was reported an armed standoff took place on the fourth level of the Menara Kakrawala Skyline Building, on Jalan M.H. Thamrin. At least eight people, four attackers and four civilians, three Indonesians and an Algerian-Canadian, were killed, and 23 others were injured due to the attack. The Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, ISIL, claimed responsibility. Background Though Indonesia is far from the conflicts of the Middle East, the country has experienced several attacks by Islamist militants in the past two decades that have killed hundreds. This was the first major attack in Jakarta since the 2009 Jakarta bombings, which were carried out by Jama Islamia G and killed seven plus two suicide bombers. According to a spokesman for the Indonesian National Police, the police had received information in November 2015 about a warning from ISIL that there would be an attack in Indonesia. Attacks On the 14th of January 2016 at 10.40 a.m. local time, Several blasts followed by gunfire were reported to have occurred in central Jakarta, which is home to many luxury hotels, offices and embassies. The attack targeted a traffic police post at a major intersection, not far from the front doors of a Starbucks coffee shop and a Burger King franchise. The post was heavily damaged by explosions. Footage later emerged purportedly showing two attackers huddling together outside the Starbucks outlet when one of their suicide bombs was activated and they were blown up. A series of pictures showed two gunmen opening fire against a crowd which gathered on Jalan M. H. Thamrin around a police post damaged by the bombings. The first gunman appears to shoot at two police officers, and the crowd disperses. The second gunman then shoots another policeman at close range. A police spokesman said the first gunman then took two hostages, a Dutchman and an Algerian, in the Skyline Building car park, and both gunmen were later shot dead by police. Perpetrators According to Jakarta Police, an ISIL-linked Indonesian extremist, Bara Naim, was the mastermind behind the attack. Naim, thought to be a native of the central Java city in Pekalongan, relocated to Raqqa, Syria sometime before the attacks. He has been known to authorities since at least 2010. An Indonesian national police official said three men had been detained in the investigation into a four-hour siege in the nation's capital Thursday that left seven people dead. Police were able to name one of the attackers the subject of a widely shared image that became the face of the attack, Afif Sunaki, who was seen carrying a gun and rucksack during the attacks. He was earlier sentenced to seven years for attending a militant camp. Four attackers died during the attack. The two attackers who died in a suicide bombing were identified as Dain Juni Kurniati and Ahmad Muazab Sarin, both aged 26. Two attackers who died in a shootout with police were named. Firstly, Afif, A. K. A. Sanakime, K. A. Sanardi, age unknown. And secondly, Marwan, A. K. A. Muhammad Ali, aged 40. Casualties A total of 20 people were injured, including five police officers and an Algerian, who escaped from Starbucks. The Dutch embassy also confirmed that one of its nationals was seriously injured and being treated at a hospital. 
Of the four civilian casualties, three died on the day of the attack. Tahir Ameru Ali, 70, an Algerian-Canadian hearing care specialist visiting family in Indonesia when he was shot. Aftermath Two days after the attack, Indonesian security forces arrested 12 people linked with the men. The 12 arrested were accused of plotting further attacks against Indonesian government, police and foreign targets in connection with the attackers who were shot dead in the attack. Reactions Domestic Condolence flowers in front of Serena Mall. The text says, Condolence for Serena victims. We are not afraid. From DPN Seknas Jokowi. President Joko Widodo called the attacks acts of terror in a televised statement. In his statement, he said, Our nation and our people should not be afraid. We will not be defeated by these acts of terror. I hope the public stays calm. We all are grieving for the fallen victims of this incident, but we also condemn the act that has disturbed the security and peace and spread terror among our people. Quote. Residents of Jakarta and across Indonesia took his statement, we are not afraid, to social media with the hashtag, hashtag comedadactiket, which was widely used on Twitter in posts offering condolences to the victims or for expressing defiance. Starbucks issued a press statement condemning the attack. International Association of Southeast Asian Nations The ASEAN member states condemned the attacks and extend its deepest sympathies to Indonesian government and families of the victims, as well supporting Indonesian authorities' action to bring the perpetrators to justice. European Union High Representative for Foreign Affairs Federica Mogherini sympathized with the relatives and friends of the victims noting that terrorism is the global problem which is to be tackled globally. Federica Mogherini also promised Indonesian government to cooperate closely with Indonesia in defending peace and the values of freedom and diversity. United Nations Secretary General of the United Nations Ban Ki-moon condemned the attacks and reaffirmed that, there is absolutely no justification, for such acts of terrorism. Australia Foreign Minister Julie Bishop released a statement stating that she had been in touch with, Indonesian Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi, offering any support Indonesia needed to respond to the attacks. She also stated that the Australian government condemned the attacks. Canada Foreign Affairs Minister Stefan Dion vowed to double down on efforts to fight extremism after the attack occurred, stating, Canada will continue to stand by Indonesia and cooperate in the fight against extremism. We offer our full support to the Indonesian authorities during this challenging time. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau also offered similar support to Indonesia. China Spokesperson Hong Lei of the Chinese Foreign Ministry said the Chinese government strongly condemns the perpetrators of the attacks. East Timor The government of East Timor condemned the attacks and support Indonesian efforts in combating terrorism. India Prime Minister Narendra Modi condemned the reprehensible attacks and said his thoughts are with those who lost their loved ones. He prayed for the speedy recovery of the injured. Japan. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said he was shocked and infuriated by the attacks and that Japan will stand by Indonesia in strongly condemning them and never tolerating such acts. Quote. Malaysia. Prime Minister Najib Razak wrote on Twitter that he was deeply shocked and saddened and offered help to Indonesia in any possibility means. Netherlands. Minister of Foreign Affairs Bert Coenders condemned the attacks and offered assistance. New Zealand New Zealand government strongly condemned the attacks, while Nikki K. New Zealand's duty minister said the explosions in Jakarta and the death of innocent people were deeply disturbing. Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif strongly condemned the attacks. He said, the people and government of Pakistan share the pain of Indonesian brethren at this 
critical moment and that terrorism was a common threat to Muslim countries and to fight it was their collective responsibility. Quote, Philippines. The Department of Foreign Affairs strongly condemned the attacks and expressed its solidarity with the Indonesian people. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Foreign Minister Adil al-Jubir condemned the attack, stating that the attack should strengthen our resolve to work effectively together to combat the scourge of terrorism. Quote, Singapore. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long wrote on a Facebook post that he was shocked and dismayed by news of the bomb attacks in Jakarta. Quote, Thailand. Prime Minister Prayut Chan O Cha was saddened to hear the recent attacks and offered condolences and his country's support to Indonesia. United Kingdom. Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond condemned the attacks as a senseless acts of terror and called on all British nationals in Jakarta and elsewhere in Indonesia, to maintain vigilance and monitor travel advice, local media and to follow the advice of local security authorities. United States, the U.S. Embassy encouraged its citizens to stay away from areas around the Sari Pan Pacific Hotel and Serena Plaza, Vietnam. Spokesperson of the Vietnamese Ministry of Foreign Affairs La Hoi Hai Binh condemned the attacks with its embassy have working with Indonesian officials to monitor the situation.